2020 was a challenging year as lives and businesses around the world were disrupted by COVID-19. As the pandemic began to spread, RGE and its business groups rallied to put in place measures to safeguard our 60,000 employees in the workplace and respond to the needs of the communities in which we operate. RGE partnered with Tenoto Foundation to charter a Garuda 777 to deliver millions of much needed medical supplies, including masks, gloves, goggles, and PPE equipment to support frontline healthcare workers in Indonesia. RGE's businesses in Indonesia, China, Brazil, and Canada also donated significant amounts of protective medical gear to their local communities hard hit by the impact of COVID-19. And our focus wasn't just in helping throughout the pandemic. We also had commitments and targets when it came to meeting our sustainability goals. 2020 was a standout year in which we reaffirmed our commitment to sustainability with ambitious projects unveiled around the world. April Group launched April 2030, comprised of 18 ambitious targets to achieve net zero emissions from land use, positive measurable gains in nature, and zero extreme poverty in neighboring communities while transforming the business for sustainable growth. Sateri launched its 2030 vision with targets to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050, 98% sulfur recovery at all its mills by 2025, and to utilize textile waste to produce viscous products with 50% recycled content by 2023 and 100% by 2030. And Asia Symbol unveiled its 2030 sustainability targets including commitments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 30% and increase the share of renewable and clean energy to 95%. Looking at RGE's business groups in 2020. In Indonesia, President Joko Widodo officially inaugurated Asia Pacific Rayon's Integrated Viscous Rayon Production Facility, the largest in the country. APR launched Asia Pacific Yarn to transform APR's viscous rayon into high-quality yarn for textiles and open Jakarta Fashion Hub, a collaborative space for designers, creatives, and fashion enthusiasts to drive sustainable growth in Indonesian fashion. April's Ecosystem Restoration Project, RER, completed its eco-research camp to serve as a tropical peatland science hub. RER was also selected by the Ministry of Environment and Forestry as the new home of Karina, a female tiger who was released back into the wild after undergoing medical treatment. Asian Agri continued its strategy of increasing palm oil yields from existing land without opening new plantations by helping three village cooperatives replant their old oil palms with higher yielding topaz seeds. Together with Asian Agri and Cow Corporation, Apical launched Smile, a new sustainability initiative to help independent smallholders improve their livelihoods, increase their yields, acquire international certification, and secure sales premiums from selling certified palm oil. Opical also completed phase one of its new refineries in Kalimantan, adding a production capacity of 11,800 tons per day, while its Padang refinery is now operating with a capacity of 3,500 tons per day and successfully commenced exports in 2020. Also in Indonesia, Tanoto Foundation partnered with UNDP to launch SDG Academy Indonesia, a training center to help Indonesia accelerate the achievement of the SDGs. In China, three of Seteri's five mills were verified to comply with European Union Best Available Techniques, EU BAT parameters, with a commitment towards closed-loop manufacturing, Sateri successfully launched Finex, its marquee brand for recycled fiber, which contains up to 20% recycled content. Sateri also entered China's Lyocell fiber market with a newly installed 20,000 ton per annum production line to supply the textile and non-woven markets. Sateri's commitment to innovation was further bolstered with the opening of a new 
48 million US dollar R&D innovation center in Shandong that will focus initially on quality and productivity improvements in lyocell production. And in a further commitment to lyocell, Asia Symbol's Ru Jiao Mills lyocell line began operations, marking the mill's transformation from pulp and paperboard to a wider range of products. Asia Symbol Xin Hui Mills non-woven line started operation in 2020, launching a new product line as part of the company's expansion strategy. Asia Symbol Xin Hui also signed an investment agreement with the Jiangmen government in a ceremony attended by the governor of Guangdong province. In Brazil, Brasel announced an additional investment of 1 billion rial for new production processes focused on innovation and sustainability in the state of Sao Paulo, adding to the 7 billion rial in investments previously announced for the expansion project of its dissolving pulp mill, Project Star. In China, Pacific Oil and Gas continued to make progress with the Phase 3 construction of the Rudong LNG receiving terminal, now 90% complete. In Canada, PO&G's Wood Fiber LNG signed a construction security agreement with pipeline provider Fortis BC to clear the path for the gas line project that will supply the facility. This agreement happens as natural gas exploration and production company Pacific Canbrium Energy exceeded production targets during its first year as part of RGE. Following its acquisition in 2019 to create an integrated wood fiber LNG business, with direct pipeline connection to major gas trading hubs. As we move forward, RGE plans to renew its larger purpose, improving lives by developing resources sustainably, and a commitment to always doing what's good for the community, good for the country, good for the climate, good for the customer, and only then achieving what is good for the company.